The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, But about that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be one in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know what, on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, today marks the beginning of the season of Advent. A season which is laden with promise and hope. However, the lessons today scream of war and chaos, of surprise and abandonment, of relationships and communities which are splintered and divided. And so as I studied the lessons and sat to write my sermon for this week, there was a familiar tug on my heart to point out all the impossibilities of today. Our hearts are wrecked by refugees, by protests, by political proceedings, by detention camps, by broken promises, by one another. And plenty of us are lonely, bored, tired, sick, grieving, and afraid. I am good at writing this kind of sermon, of pointing out the mess that surrounds us and reminding us that it is our call to be the heart and hands of Jesus. There is an adage that's often said about pastors, that every pastor has one sermon. It's said we basically rewrite that sermon over and over again the entirety of our careers, through different imagery and stories, but it's basically a variation on the same theme. Now, at first, this can sound a little disparaging to a pastor's intellect. However, it's true in many regards, and I'm actually okay with it. Because the way I preach illustrates what I believe to be the essence of God's character. And additionally, Jesus basically said the same things over and over again, so I feel like I'm in good company. Anyway, all this is to say, I just couldn't do it this week. You still get a sermon. <laughs> But the sermon that is etched on my heart is a tiring one. Together with God, we can save the world. This is the sermon that I write over and over again. If you've heard me preach, you know it's true. But it can grow weary and to, to persist in showing up to what is messy, to what is frustrating, to what lies in shadow, to what seems like it's not going anywhere. Sometimes I just want life to be easy. I want things not to hurt. And so I couldn't preach on Isaiah's vision of hammering swords into plowshares, even though that is my personal theology call, even though I already had a sermon started on that theme. I'm just tired. I think I'm just tired of the bigness of the world and the smallness of me. And I needed something to steal me away from myself, I guess. And so while the language of God coming like a thief in the night has ominous tones to it, I attached to those words this week. Because I remembered once reading that Eugene Peterson, who if you don't know him, he is the author of the uh, message translation of the Bible. He is a prolific writer and theologian. Anyway, he once said that his one sermon was this. God loves you. God's on your side. God's coming after you, and he's relentless. That's a sermon that I could hear every week. And that God's coming after you, relentlessness, I attach to that idea, that thievery imagery. And so even though the words, if the owner of the house had come in what part of the night, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready for the Son of Man is coming in an unexpected, unexpected hour. Even those, those words are supposed to encourage us to keep ready for God, 
to prepare, for they might show up at any time. They're supposed to sound ominous. They gave me hope this week. Because for me, I probably just need God to bulldoze the door down and set themselves down at the table, whether they've been invited or not. I don't need God to be polite. I need God to be a thief. Steal me away, Lord Jesus. Take my heart. Don't let the iron bars stop you. Be a thief in the most conniving of ways. Outsmart my intellect and weasel your way in. May I not be ready. Surprise me. Because I know that Jesus says be ready, but that seems to imply that I'm knowing what I'm looking for. Or that if I'm just watchful enough, then I might be able to anticipate or control when God will show up. And for me, when I think I know what I'm looking for, I often miss what I'm meant to find altogether. I use my intelligence, my thirst for knowing, and my longing for certainty as a type of security system. It helps me feel as if I'm the master of my universe, essentially protecting myself from the unknown and the unexpected. And so perhaps the good news here is that Jesus has been staking out the joint, and there will be a break-in. Maybe it's good news that I can't actually be ready enough for Jesus. The promise of Advent is there was and is and will be a break-in, whether we defend against God or not. We saw this when God broke into creation as a small babe in a manger. We see this when God breaks into our hearts, overpowering our intellect and apathy with unwitting compassion and hope. And we trust that God will break forth anew tomorrow and next year and every year after that, until God finally steals away all the pain and suffering and futility of this world. I could not cry loud enough right now. I am not ready, and I never will be. So come anyway. Take me, or leave me, or do something, you holy thief. Because I long for God to do something unexpected. It is precisely because everything hurts that we need Advent and why we need to hear over and over again, God loves you, God's on your side, God's coming after you, and he's relentless. Amen. See, this God that we worship is not interested in our loss prevention programs, security systems, or our hypervigilance. This holy thief cheats on the ways of the world, congratulating themselves on being unjust, and resist our attempts to turn Jesus into an honest man. God's interested in getting what God wants, and they're not, enough, not above breaking the laws of humanity to get it. And God wants us to break the law too, being a co-conspirator with them, sneaking delectable grace into every corner of the world when people are least expecting it. Of course, that line of thinking will lead me into my usual Together We Can Save the World sermon. So for now, let's just leave it at this. Steal our hearts, Jesus. Leave us better for it. And help us to sneak a little grace and love into the places we go. Amen.